Good evening and welcome to the first ever online AGM this year. Um, I'm Yubo Fujinami and uh, class of 2014. And I'm so excited to have uh, many guests tonight. So um, this is the first AGM. So I would like to share a couple of tips to make this event run smoothly. Uh, I'll share my screen. Can you see my screen, everybody? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, chat is open to everyone. So ask anything, questions, and leave comments uh, anytime. Uh, speakers will take questions and answer them uh, sometime. And also, we will have a Q&A session. And uh, you can raise your hand if you are a participant, but it looks everybody are hosts <laughs> at this time. So I think raise physically your hands. Okay, I, I'll constate later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, in, in Q and A session, you can raise your hand and ask questions. And also in the treasury report session, we'll ask you to approve the report by raise your hand. So please participate in the vote actively, please. Yeah, uh, that's my couple of uh, suggestions. And also, if your name is uh, Stacy Cole or your top side over your window, uh, you can move your mouse over your face and you can see three dots top right over your window. And by clicking it, you can find uh, the feature to change your name. So please uh, change your name to your real name. Uh, we want to realize who, who you are. Okay, thank you. So uh, first, uh, Yamamoto-san, uh, president of Alumni Club of Japan, uh, will make uh, opening remarks. So Yamamoto-san, please. Thank you, Fujinami-san. So uh, everybody, you hear me all right? Yeah. Good. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. Uh, thank you very much for participating in our club's annual general meeting, 2020. My name is Osamu Yamamoto. I'm, a, I'm your president of Boost Club of Japan. First, let me hope that each one of you and your loved ones are safe and in good health during these uncertain times. Tonight, we would like to update you with how Booth community is adjusting to this unprecedented challenge. But before doing that, I would like to introduce two guest speakers for our AGM tonight. First guest speaker is Stacy Cole, former deputy dean for MBA programs. During Stacy's 16 years tenure as deputy dean she has been guiding us to rebuild our recruiting activities in Japan. Many of you benefited a great deal from her mentorship during your time at Booth. She will be speaking to you from Chicago later today. Stacy, thanks for doing this so early in the morning. The other guest speaker tonight is Mike Onishi, MBA 93, CEO of Next Chapter and long-term investor. Mike is kind enough to talk about his perspective on how you can control your destiny in post-MBA career development. We are honored to have both speakers I would like to invite all of you to ask questions during their sessions. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to explain how Booth community is adjusting to this unprecedented challenge. First update is on board renewal. At our board meeting held on February 28th, 2020, uh, we made our decision to renew all of all our 
board members for another two years. So Fujinami-san, would you show the chart there? Huh? Yes, here's a chart. So uh, here's a, your board. Uh, we have uh, Fukazawa-san, Hideaki Fukazawa, class of 83, as our chairman. And we have uh, two vice president, uh, Takshio Hama, XXP3, and also Yugo Fujinami, class of 14. And we have Shin, Shin Saro, XP5. Uh, he's uh, in charge of Chief J, which I'm going to explain to you momentarily. And we have Yuri Hamamura on board from class of 16. She's in charge of communication. And, and last but not least, we have Nobu Kawaii from class of 17. He's a treasurer. So this is, this is your board. And I can tell you this, your board is functioning very effectively in facing various challenges. We are now 100% online basis and this AGM is an excellent example of our board working, working closely with Bruce team in the region. We are especially thankful to Penka Bagman, thank you Penka, Shike Ham, and Lenora Yang, and Priscilla Chu for all the dedicated work to make our first AGM online to take place tonight. Second update is about class of 2020, both full-time and EMBA, who just graduated from Booth. They had to face this challenge in the very last stage of their Booth life, but they were bold and creative enough to make it through. We are all here to congratulate you and your family on what you have achieved despite all the difficulties. Congratulations and job well, well done. Tonight we have a seven student attending from class of 2020. Congratulations once again. We are all very, very proud of you. Third update is about class of 2022. We have seven full-time MBA admitted students uh, based in Japan and 10 EMBA admitted students also based in Japan who will attend booths from autumn quarter. You will be the first class to experience full-time program at home. We have been notified by Team Mad Herb Lajan that Bruce is doing everything they can to make your experience as rewarding as once before you. Let me quote Dean Lajan here. I am confident that our shared commitment to our core values combined with the lessons we have learned over these months we will ensure that we maintain our distinctive academic environment and operate at the highest caliber while protecting the health of our community. I thank you for your dedicated to the school's continued success and to one another's well-being as we navigate this next phase together. Tonight, uh, we have a seven admitted student online to attend this AGM. They are Yohei Arai, Shuta Aoki, Yuki Ishida, Yoshia Kawamura, Tadayuki Kim, Shintaro Kuryu, and Yusuke Wada. Please join me welcome, welcoming them to Booth community and let us help them in any way we can to make their unprecedented challenge as rewarding as they can be. 
My final update is about our continuous commitment to offer you unrivaled learning programs from intellectual vigor of Buddhist community. Last year, we had Professor Stephen Davis coming over to our AGM 2019 to discuss his latest research on indexes that he's creating to gauge political uncertainties. In November 2019, we had Chief J, led by Shin Sato, or Chicago Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum Japan, collaborating with Professor Waverly Dutch coming over to Tokyo. This year, despite all the challenges we face today, in November, the club, together with Alumni Club of University of Chicago, will be co-hosting a seminar with Professor Homei Shirakawa, former governor of Bank of Japan, to share his perspective with us. The concept of finance and the financial industry are facing unique opportunity to contribute to the new world order, sustainability-based capitalism. Mankind is making serious efforts to increase the sustainability of our world. New solutions in such fields like green tech, life science, food, water, and agri-tech, transportation services, communication service, and educational service, you name it, are being sought. Once those solutions come into reality, there will be massive, massive long-term capital requirements to finance them. We are in the midst of this transition. The reality is, however, we are yet to be there. Central banks must find a way to cope with new reality of zero interest rates and continuous economic crisis. We are in the midst of the transition until the time when this transition is over, central bankers must find a narrow path to continue to sustain global financial industry and its network. For this reason, having dialogue with Professor Homei Shirakawa will be a great opportunity for Buddhist community to think about the transition that we are in and the law of central bankers there. Let me conclude my remarks by praying for all those who are fighting in the many front lines of a battle against COVID-19 globally. We should overcome this difficult time and will emerge stronger and more anti-fragile than ever as a person and as a society. Thank you all once again for joining us tonight online and being part of the greater booth and the University of Chicago alumni community. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And I now I would like to entertain uh, your comments and questions. Okay, thank you, Yamamoto-san. So now uh, I want to take some questions from the floor, no, from everyone. Um, please raise your hand physically or put your raise hand button on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Or you can type anything on chat. Atsushi Yamazaki-san. Can you unlock your mute? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Osami Yamazaki-san. It was an amazing opportunity for us to invite Professor Homei Shirakawa. And, and I would be, I would like to be there differently. And I'm ex extremely excited about it. So my question is, wh what is the background of the event has happened? And 
uh, when the specific, what type of specific perspective do you think Homei Shirakawa is bring uh, into the session? All right. Thank you, Yamazaki-san. How's your new life? Uh, it's been great so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to hear that. Yeah. Good to hear that. Okay. Thanks for your question. It's about uh, you know the background of us being able to bring uh, uh, you know Professor Homei Shirakawa uh, uh, coming over to speak with us. First and foremost, that's uh, a huge effort of being made by uh, Kato-san here and mm. Mr. Faust. Uh, both are working very hard as an, uh, you know, the uh, key member of uh, Alumni Club of the University of Chicago. Uh, as you know, uh, the governor uh, Shirakawa is our alum 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 alumni, University of Chicago. Mm. Right? And uh, we had our pleasure of having him coming over in 2018 when we had uh, uh, the booth event called Insight in Tokyo. 2018 was a year that we kind of celebrated the uh, you know, 10 year anniversary of the great, uh, great uh, global financial crisis. There we invited uh, Shirakawa-san on one hand and uh, the other side we invited uh, Professor Krosna and uh, both were at that time in the face of uh, you know, gro global financial crisis. They were wor working both and uh, Shirakawa-san being part, you know, being the governor of Bank of Japan, and Professor Krosner at that time was at Fed. So uh, yeah. they, they visited their, you know, memories, not just the blight memories, okay, uh, happy ones, but very difficult ones too. And uh, they had a, they they very frankly uh, shared their perspective with us at that uh, insight. So uh, we, uh, thanks to Kato-san and Aniyu-san's, uh, you know, continuous effort, we keep that dialogue open uh, with Professor Shirakawa. So that is the background of us being able to have him, uh, Mr. Shirakawa coming over. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's in November. So, uh, you know, I really would like uh, all of you to sign up for that when it's ready. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, other questions? Anybody? Kato-san, do you have anything to add uh, to my remarks about the Shirakawa-san? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I, if I may, uh, earlier this year, uh, uh, myself and Neil Faust wrote a letter to Shirakawa-san uh, asking whether he would be kind enough to speak to our alumni. And at that time, you know, there was no such thing as COVID-19 being what it is as it is now. So uh, at that time, I asked Shirakawa-san to, uh, as a topic of his uh, lecture, uh, a very uh, a broad perspective, uh, which means uh, something like this. Uh, I wrote him that, uh, well, you know, the booth community, a lot of uh, financial oriented background people, right? But when it comes to the whole university, you know, we have a very diverse uh, group of people, uh, you know, ranging from uh, legal or you know, medicine or economics, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, while uh, Shirakawa-san is, you know, as everybody knows, a uh, former uh, governor of the Bank of Japan, I asked him uh, not to be too specific about, you know, financial topics, but rather talk more broadly and give us his holistic views on critical issues going forward at that time, which is November. Now, uh, as I speak today, uh, this COVID-19, I don't have to lecture you on this, but uh, it has had a devastating effect on everything. So in light of that, I think we need to have a chat with uh, uh, Shirakawa-san and uh, kind of refocus the topics of his speech so that it would interest a broad audience as well as those who are looking, seeking for uh, guidance in the 
financial community. Thank you, Kator san. Hi, san. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yamamoto san, we have a question from uh, Shinichi Sato san on chat. All right. Um, any thought or suggestion about DX of the alumni club? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty much Shin Sato's uh, responsibility to improve that. <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> but anyway, yeah. the answer. Yeah, the joke aside, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a, you know, but you know, one thing we can celebrate is that we are having, uh, you know, our AGM first time online. That's very, very good. And there's a, unfortunately, uh, looks like there's a, you know, very realistic scenario that we will have to do it again online. So we have uh, some time to improve our DX, right? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> okay, any other questions? So maybe no. So let's move to the next uh, session. Okay, thank you, Yamamoto san. And, uh, Okay, next is a treasury report of the Alumni Club of Japan. Uh, this is a mandatory session from the bylaws of our club. So please uh, take a moment <laughs> to uh, think about this. So Nobu Kawai-san, uh, can you start yep. that? I will share yep. the screen. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Nobu Kawai, class of 2017, and treasurer of the Alumni Club of Japan. Um, I'm here to share the only one thing that uh, there is no critical issue on our financial system. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Uh, obviously, this part is not fun, so I will uh, try to make this as short as I can. Um, this page is showing that during the recent three-year account balance change. And as of today, the current balance is about 2.4 million yen. And unfortunately, COVID-19 had no impact on our financial stability. Uh, rather, it increased by 60K in the past 12 months. Uh, we've been keeping a sufficient level of funds thanks to Yamamoto-san's leadership alumni sport and school sport. Uh, can you move to the next page? Here is the breakdown of the, of the increase. Uh, we've received 30K donation from alumni. Also, we got another 30K net cash inflow from the uh, alumni event, which consists of uh, expenses for the previous AGM, the recruiting event, and the co-hosted event under the collaboration with U Chicago Alumni Club. And lastly, we've received 90K school reimbursement for the past recruiting event in, in 2018 and 2019. And uh, bottom line is that our balance is increased by uh, about 60K. And um, also, please let me uh, say thank you to uh, that donor here. Can you move to the next page? Uh, on behalf of the alumni club members, Mr. Uh, Tsuhito Sakai-san, GSP class of 1982. And uh, all the attendees, Please give Sakai-san a big hand and ovation over the PC uh, monitor. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, um, I need uh, approval. <laughs> so I um, appreciate it if, if you could uh, raise your hand physically or virtually if you approve uh, this a financial uh, report. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. We see many hands up. So the report was approved by participants. Thank you, Kawaii-san. Thank you. So anybody has questions on this? Maybe, maybe no, I think. <laughs> Uh, this year, the recruiting events will happen on Zoom, so there will be no cost of access. So COVID-19 isn't a big cost, uh, cost cut incident for our club, I believe. Okay, uh, so uh, let's move to the very big part of today's program. So uh, now, uh, next is uh, Stacy's special speech. So, Osamu Yamamoto-san, can you introduce Stacy to everyone? <laughs> okay, okay, thanks, uh, Fujinami-san. But, you know, I don't need a long speech. Uh, so, Stacy, once again, thanks for waking up so early in the morning. We really appreciate and we are quite honored to have you on board mm -hmm. for our gym. With that, Stacy, it's all yours. Thank you so much. Well, um, first of all, the honor is truly mine. Um, I'm just, my heart is so warm to see all of your faces um, and to be with you today. So thank you for this invitation. You know, I've had the privilege of serving um, as deputy dean for 16 years, as you've heard. And you know, at, in business schools, at least at Booth, a dean can only serve, the dean, the big dean, can only serve for two five-year terms. So 16 years in the dean's office is an eternity. And um, I've had the privilege of working for three permanent deans, uh, Ted Snyder, Sunil Kumar, and uh, Madhav Rajan. And I've also worked with two interim deans or deans that have been in the post for less than a year, both Harry Davis, who was our dean for five months, and, um, and Doug Skinner, who is a great friend of this club. Um, and as you know, throughout, I have really, really loved my work. I love working with students and alumni and, and staff. Um, so I thought I could talk a little bit in the time that you've generously given me about um, what I've seen. And you know, one of the great gifts that is given to us when you have a long tenure in an organization like so many of you have, um, is that you get to see things grow and, and build. And newcomers often kind of miss that. They come into an organization, they see a high-performing team or a great initiative, and they assume things were always that way. Um, I think the psychologists talk about something about a recency effect. I'm an economist, not a psychologist, so I won't get that all wrong. Um, but it paints an overly rosy picture, and it overlooks the, the process that really helped build what is so great. You know, here in Chicago Booth, Japan, and the group of this club, the work of this club is often really called out as one such success. Uh, we others in, in alumni relations, we point to the cohesiveness and the, the effectiveness of this group. Um, your great results, as you've heard, in terms of admissions and um, the impressive attendance you have at events, and um, and also the enormous pride that you all have in the school. Um, this is what we work for, and objectively, you are um, among the, the, the world, around the world, one of the strongest groups. And we know the backstory. We know that there were days where the group was more, was smaller, the gatherings were smaller, and uh, um, that there's been tremendous work done. So what I would love to do in this short time is just to talk a little bit about my perspective on how we got here and why I'm so optimistic uh, for our future. And you know, being a good Chicago economist, right? I'm gonna start with facts. <laughs> so you've heard um, the facts about where we are today in terms of admissions. Uh, we should all be incredibly proud, but we also know, or and, we also know that a decade ago, um, as Booth was very fortunate to have one, two, or maybe three uh, Japanese students in our full-time cohort. And over the same period in our executive program, uh, we would bounce around. We'd have three, five, but never double digits. 
And um, if we fast forward to today, you've heard these results. You know, in the last few years, we've varied between th eight and 14 Japanese students in a class. Um, the executive program hit double digits for the first time of Japanese citizens, and this is just like incredible. In addition, you know, you know the alumni events um, have grown in number, but they've also grown in impact. And I think that is something that's sometimes hard to measure, but something we should be incredibly proud of. Um, I know that I have been in, a, in venues where um, they were quite comfortable in earlier years, and now we spill out into the streets because the gathering is so large. Um, I also know that I have been at larger events and been approached by the presidents of of clubs from other peer schools asking, how did we do this? How did we make these events? And so um, I think they wanna know the secret sauce of the backstory and we'll just smile and say, it's our great club <laughs> and our leadership. So if we think about how we got here, if I think about it, I think there are a number of critical factors um, that underlie these results. One is that we have had a series of deans at Booth, uh, the dean, the big dean, um, that stepped up and really engaged with, with Japan. Um, second, um, among you, uh, we've had dedicated leaders at all levels, and I think that's incredibly important, right? It's not just the, the, the title, but each and every person has stepped up. And of course, we allocated some new resources to this market. So I don't know how much detail to go into, um, but um, let me tell you a little bit about what I saw on the backside with the deans. You know, when I joined the school in 04, Ted Snyder, who had always been an advocate for global education, was launching um, the global advisory boards. And um, those boards represented the Americas, Asia, as well as Middle East, um, uh, Europe, and Africa. And these groups have evolved, and they've evolved into the global leaders uh, group that um, has wonderful representation from Japan. But whether you think about the Snyder version or the Rajan version, um, these groups basically are charged with tapping the most senior voices in a, in a community to advance the school's visibility and also to offer insights um, that support the school's global strategy. And with these actions, you know, with his actions, Dean Snyder set the stage for Japan's representation, both in the GLG, um, but also on the school's alumni council, its most senior group of advisors. Dean Kumar came in and he built on what was really an unexpected phone call. I don't know if you all know this story, but he got a call from an attorney in, I don't know, for 2014 or 2015 telling him that there was a nearly $2 million bequest um, from a man in Japan who, was, who did not attend the University of Chicago. Um, he wished he had, but he never had the resources to do it. And in his passing, he wanted to be sure that others had that honor. Um, the gift was wonderful. It was only for Japanese nationals and our applicants pool was too small. And so Dean Kumar's focus on regional scholarships and outreach was really designed to build on that call and build awareness. And of course, the school is incredibly appreciative of the support we've gotten um, from alumni who've allowed us to grow um, those alumni resources. Today, Dean Rajan has built on um, both of the alumni bodies, built, seeded by um, Dean Snyder and also Dean Kumar to focus on Japan. Um, he's grown the influence of the senior Japanese alumni to the highest level possible in our school as an advisor to him and also to his deputy deans. This is something about which I think the club should be incredibly proud. Um, today, John Ihara, 78, Hiro Hirano, 89, and Osamu, who you've heard from at the beginning, you're, you're a president, 93, serve in these important capacities. 
Now, while these efforts are by the deans are very, very important, I think we all know that a senior person can come in and make a statement that we will do something, but without the support um, on the ground or in market, they are never successful. Um, I mentioned the three GLG and council members for whom we are incredibly grateful. But I also think it's so important for us to call out the terrific work of um, other leaders in this community. And I know I'm going to miss people, so please, please forgive me. Uh, be generous with me and um, uh, please. Um, but I think we should be celebrating so much about this club. Um, we talked about um, the connection with the University of Chicago and Kato-san and the work you have been doing over the years. It's been incredibly important for us, not just to stand alone as Booth, but as the greater University of Chicago. You know, we have had just tireless efforts by more recent graduates. And it's so heartwarming for me um, to see you go, to you, see you have uh, a leadership voice here because I know all the interviews that you have done, all the organizing, all the questions you've answered, but not just you, you've mobilized the entire community. Um, our students, I, I go to so many markets and I never see incoming students manning tables <laughs> or, or doing the work that you guys do in Japan. And so, I know, as I said, that my list is really incomplete. I just want to call out and recognize the fact that it's really insufficient for a dean to just focus on a market. Um, in my humble experience, the reason we at Booth are identifying Japan as this wonderful club is because you really live this idea that leadership occurs at all different levels. Uh, a, a really important message. So the magic, I think, in Japan, <laughs> the magic is that on top of your love for the school, um, there's collaboration and execution that rests on a deep respect that you have for one another. And I think that is really at the root of the success that we've seen. I think of it as our success. So I'm gonna be audacious for a moment, if you will, and um, place myself on Team Japan. Um, I, I do this because over the years I have been so privileged to work alongside so many of you sharing ideas, experimenting with new formats. Um, I can remember when I, I said we should do a different type of, you know, we should try to have a, a, a panel where we ask people to show their personalities, right? And then, whoa, we kind of let all loose. It was kind of, oh, maybe we went too far. <laughs> But it was wonderful because um, we were willing to be bold and to have fun and, and that those efforts have been incredibly fruitful. So I'm very, very proud um, of Team Japan and I'm, um, you know, elbowing my way onto the team. I want one of the team jerseys if I, if I could get one. <laughs> So, you know, when other people look at Team Japan, yes, they see the story, but I think the backstory keeps us really humble and it keeps us on track. It helps us see why we've been so successful because we've been focused on collaborating, not in taking credit or, you know, although we do have our fair share of high fives. Um, <laughs> and this is why I'm incredibly optimistic. You know, I know that the collaborative spirit that's really at the core of this club um, is going to continue. And, you know, this shared sense of ownership is going to continue to strengthen the reputation of our school. I know that you will continue to be candid with the leadership of the school and help them see that what resources are need to, needed to be effective in this region because we have to continue our very successful strategy, both in admissions and in alumni connectivity. I have loved working with you. Um, I have been honored. And I've learned a tremendous, a tremendous amount from you. But you guys are in good hands. You have Penka here, CK working with you on the ground. 
um, so many in the dean's office who also care and, and about this particular market and trust the wisdom that the group brings. So I think we're in really good hands with Team Japan. Um, I'll close, I guess, by just noting that um, when I decided to step away from deaning in December, uh, I could not have imagined the world we're living in. I imagine the same is true for all of you. That December, the year was ending, we were celebrating the new year. Um, we were not thinking that we would be living in our homes and talking to one another um, in this way. The challenges really are unprecedented. Um, but I will say that the deans are doing an excellent job really preparing for boost resumption in the fall. Uh, so it will be a safe environment and it will be an environment where learning continues in fabulous ways. You know, as for me, since July 1, um, I've been working my way through a big pile of books that have been waiting for me. Um, and um, I've been fleshing out two new courses that I'm going to start teaching when I return to the classroom in fall of 2021. I'm not sure you can tell, um, but I have a pretty good tan um, in the U.S. That's a sign of leisure time, not that I'm working in the fields. And <laughs> I um, have been uh, enjoying my weekend home on the shores of Lake Michigan. Uh, and the sunshine that has been flooding our beach uh, this summer. Uh, I'm very lucky. I have been spending time with my husband of 35 years. I have three grown children who have partners that come with them, and I have two grandchildren, which is it's the secret to life. Figure out a way to get stay around long enough to get some of those. <laughs> and um, so I'm incredibly blessed both for their health and for their love. So my original plan, you know, was to spend the spring quarter traveling. And uh, John knows this, my trip to Japan in, in March, where I would work um, for all of you to build our admissions presence. And it got delayed, postponed, postponed, not canceled. Um, I will return to Japan. I will be with you again, and we will all be um, enjoying a glass of wine or whatever it is is your preference beer together. And I look forward to pouring the glass. Thank you so much for this honor to be able to be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy. Once again. Now, I would like to uh, call upon your long-term friend from Japan, John Ehara, to uh, have to say a few words to celebrity, celebrate your new step. John? Thank you, Osamu. Um, it requires more than just a few words to express our gratitude for all the work Stacey has done for us. Um, but let me start by saying that I do concur with Stacey that the success of this uh, Team Japan is a one of a collaborative effort. And uh, you were a big part of it. And um, I think together we were able to foster that work spirit. And so, you know, look at this screen. You know, there are some gray hairs, less hair, uh, but a lot of young people it's just great. You know, we couldn't have imagined this several years ago. So uh, just recalling what Stacy has done, um, though you have provided um, tremendous mentorship, as Osamu said, to um, many of uh, uh, incoming students or prospective students, um, uh, as well as, uh, you know, um, very warm, uh, um, individual relationship. I know you hosted for a number of students a dinner or something at your home. Although I never had a, a, a chance to be, uh, be invited to your home. Uh, but that's fine with me. I, no complaint. As long as students are well taken care of. We have made um, much time, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, 
in addition to that, you know, you visited, uh, you know, Tokyo on a consistent basis for five, six years. Um, and, you know, uh, I recall uh, um, several years ago, you know, Fujinami, it was Fujinami-san that kind of insisted that, you know, Stacy got to, to visit here um, sometime in June. June is a yes. bad time for any professors. <laughs> you know, they, they love to go, to go on vacation after school is over. Um, and and Stacy had a number of you know, family obligations too, but you know uh, she did not complain and and uh, listened to our recommendation and and you know managed to to visit us and that turned out to be uh, actually really yeah, uh, um, you know timely in the visit and that generated uh, you know quite a, a strong interest among prospective applicants and. Later on, that resulted in uh, uh, increase in admission. Um, I um, it, I had a chance uh, 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 to work with Stacy on a number of uh, you know cases, uh, uh, some prospective applicants too, and I'd like to share uh, you know one or two episodes uh, with the rest of the group here. We all know uh, how wonderful a uh, personality uh, uh, you know, Stacy is, um, and very charming. But yet, I noticed that she could be so competitive. And and I, I remember we lost one applicant to uh, one insignificant school uh, after uh, quite a bit of efforts, and I was upset. Uh, that we lost, but Stacy was more upset, and we kind of agreed that we hate to lose. Uh, we never get, get used to uh, uh, you know, losing, and, and that that kind of a competitive you know juice that enabled uh, 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 her and and us to build this kind of a momentum. Um, so um, don't be fooled. No, uh, however charming person she, uh, she is, you know, Stacy could be extremely competitive. Uh, now, um, uh, what else uh, should I say? Um, one thing that I have felt over the last, particularly five years, five, six years, is that um, the distance between Chicago and Tokyo got so much closer. It's, um, it, it's a funny feeling, peculiar feeling, but you know, I always felt that uh, you know, someone in Chicago is just phone call away or just uh, one message away. So, and vice versa. And so it was not just uh, 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 the us asking you know school to do something for us, but it was a um, the communicative uh, you know dialogue. I think that uh, we all benefited from that, and and Stacy had a lot to do, uh, uh, you know, with that kind of effort. Um, Stacy mentioned about uh, her postponed trip to Japan. Uh, I don't know how next year will turn out, but we hope to see you uh, in person so that we can express our sincere gratitude for you. And I personally love to hug you in person, which <laughs> we are not supposed to do uh, under uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, environment. But you are that kind of a, a personality. Uh, you've been a tremendous mentor counselor, but most important of all, you have been a tremendous friend to many of us. So thank you. And um, on behalf of, of uh, you know, this group, I'd like to extend to you uh, best wishes for a new chapter in your life, uh, whether professional or personal, or both. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, John. That's a wonderful speech. 
And I think uh, now uh, both Stacy and Jong uh, would like to entertain your comments or questions, especially from uh, uh, young alumni and uh, admitted students. Anybody? Hmm. Before some questions, I'd like to show my uh, appreciation for Stacy. Uh, four, five, five years ago, there was not much collaboration about recruiting uh, between Japan and the school. But uh, Stacy uh, moved energetically to move people in booth, I believe. So after that, admissions are very collaborative with us and the things uh, got more smoothly. And also, I, I really appreciate you came to Japan so frequently. And I remember you came here for the recruiting event just after visiting Brazil. I believe. <laughs> so, oh, at that time, I was so surprised how energetic you uh, were <laughs> and also how you take care of Japan. So uh, on behalf of a younger generation of al alumni, uh, let me show my appreciation really high, really. Th thank you so much. I don't know where to draw uh, the line. From, uh, okay. uh, Richard, may I say a remark? Of course. From you are a uh, gray hair generation, I also would like to appreciate Stacy's. Uh, having heard what Stacy is saying, I remember the the crisis we faced about five years, yes, ago. Mm -hmm. uh, there is just one person. Yes. come from Japan to Chicago and uh, we faced that the crisis and so uh, team Yamamoto has considered several plans to enhance how to increase the number of students come from Japan to Chicago but uh, the, the, we are very lucky to have Seishi in both side because you are very very good listener. What well, you are very good, good listener to what we are looking for, and then you through your powerful influence to those hierarchy, uh, more or less uh, you could realize what we like to uh, do. So again, I, I I very appreciate your effort, your friendship and uh, you you are well understanding of the situation of, of alumni club japan thank you very much thank you may i um just uh, share you know i i think one of the things i did not focus on which you um Hidaki, have been such a wonderful friend on is our work with companies and um you, you know you help us reach companies and understand what the company perspective was on sponsoring students. And that was critically important in our understanding that the school needed to do more on the scholarship front. Uh, so I, I thank you for, on behalf of the school for that wonderful, um, that lesson that, that you helped us, that you helped us with. Um, yeah, we have a lot of great memories. I don't know if you know this about me, but when I was an assistant professor and associate professor, et cetera, at the University of Rochester, I was there for 14 years. Before I came to the University of Chicago, um, I had many Japanese students and they were excellent. And when I got to Chicago and I saw we had so few, I knew there was something systematically wrong because I understood the great talent in your country I am friends to this day with many of those students. When I come back on, came back on Booth Business, Pinka, cover your ears, I would um, go to dinner with some of my Simon School alumni and friends from that period. Um, and so I understood that we had done something wrong on our side. And one of my first trips in October of was to Japan, um, where I stood in front of, an, of a room um, of people who I hoped would be in the class of 2007. It was an enormous crowd. And I said, Please, we really do want you to apply and to attend. And people were so polite um, and very few applied and few attended. So I knew, I knew the talent, 
and knew what was there. So finding you and working with you all, that was that was a gift. So thank you, so. you Stacy. Now I'd like to turn to a new readmitted student like uh, okay, Kawamura san or Wada san. You have any <laughs> comments or questions for Stacy or John? Go ahead. Uh, hi everyone, this is Yoshia. Um, I don't have any questions, sorry, but uh, uh, this is something I learned from uh, this meeting that um, I think everyone in this meeting is so committed to each other's success and also success of this organization. And as a newly admitted student, I would like to do the same and make contribution to, to this uh, society going forward. So uh, that's kind of what I learned. Sorry, this is not a question, but uh, yeah, I wanted to share this with, with everyone in this group. Thanks. Thank you, Kamar. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, hi, I'm Yus Kawada, uh, new readmitted student, and uh, yeah. Just, just a moment. I could hear some, maybe uh, you, you have some background noise behind. Mm. Ah, hi, and- uh, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, that's we lost you. Why? But uh, uh, yeah. it is muted. All right. So uh, I'd like to echo uh, Kamura san uh, about the. Hmm. Oh. Oh, what does You mute again. Hmm. What does that uh, looks like? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I will skip uh, my comment because I'm not sure why, but uh, it says the uh, host muted me uh, for a couple of the times. We, so. we can hear you all right. We can hear you all right now. Go all right. Ahead. Sure. And uh, okay, basically, you know, uh, actually, I didn't know I was, uh, you know, Booth has such a very great community until I apply for Booth. Uh, that is, uh, you know, one of the you know, saddest thing in my life. I, sh I should have applied uh, a couple of the year earlier. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I have a, uh, I would like to uh, spread uh, this information uh, to the colleagues of my company and uh, others, my friends, you know, how Boost is the great community uh, when you consider the, you know, enhancing your uh, work life. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. It is not a question either, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you all. Anyway, thank you, Stacy once again, thank and you. John. I think John, you earned a good dinner uh, at Stacy's place for your kind words. Thank you. That, yeah, with that, uh, getting back to Fujinami-san. Yes, yeah, so um, should we take a small break or continue, Mike? I um, think we can just continue, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, next is a keynote speech from Michael Onisan. So yeah, uh, okay, Yamamoto, -san, can you introduce Onisan? Of course. <laughs> uh, once again, we are especially honored to have Mike Onishi on board tonight. Mike and I went to the school, then GSB together. So uh, he was my long-term friend. And also, uh, he's, uh, as I explained to you, he's a long-term uh, you know, veteran in the corporate sector, as well as an, as an investor. And last year, when Shin Sato hosted the uh, Chief J uh, in Tokyo, uh, in uh, collaborating with uh, Professor Dutch. Uh, Mike was, uh, you know, uh, kind enough uh, to take the keynote speech role there. And it was hugely, hugely successful and uh, well received by the uh, younger participant there. So that is why this time we asked Mike to speak up uh, in this AGM as a keynote speaker. So Mike, once again, thank you very much for doing this. And with that further ado, 
uh, I give you Mike Oneshi. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Osamu-san. So let me share my screen right now, okay? Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. So hello everyone. My name is uh, Mike Onishi as uh, introduced. I'm class of 93. I run my own company supporting uh, multiple startups. And first of all, uh, thank you again and congratulations, Stacy, with your new uh, chapter. It's my uh, honor to uh, be given an opportunity to make a keynote speech uh, at this AGM tonight. And so let me start. Um, and especially as I heard that there are uh, some new admitted students. So hopefully uh, my speech would be some help. So I, I believe some of uh, you are wondering what will your future career going to look like under this uncertain situation. So I would like to share my careers and what I think uh, are key for success. Okay. So popular chart, uncertain, uh, disastrous. The world is facing unprecedented situation and demands on leaders are immense. Right, like LVMH, uh, Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy shifted production in perfume factories to produce hand sanitizers, that which were delivered to French uh, health authorities and hospitals free of charge. That's a great leadership there. Uh, Inditex, the owner of Zara, is manufacturing hospital gowns in its clothing factories and also donating masks to patients and health officials in Spain. Amazon announced unlimited paid sick leave over for those who test uh, positive for COVID-19. So the world is changing, right? So everybody knows that one of the key changes is digital transformation. And who has done more than for the digital transformation in your company? Ask yourselves. Is it the general director, the chief innovation information officer, or COVID, coronavirus? It's very clear that the reinvention of business model is starting, and now it has been advanced by chance. The time has come to accelerate proactively. So digital transformation happened in two or three months. Whereas if it would have been in the normal circumstances, it's easily take over two or three years. And as you may know, in fact, Japanese government declared to become world's most advanced IT nation in 2001, almost 20 years ago. And sorry to say, but after 20 years, Japan still has long, long way to go. Actually, many countries, I believe, surpassed Japan in the IT literacy world. Oh, very unfortunate fact. How is the world changing? Okay. High-tech connections. Many older people around the world are isolated from their families. Right? In fact, I'm also have not been allowed to meet my parents since March. So it's been four months. I'm separated from my parents. Uh, look at this picture. It's a Belgian company, Zorobots, has made this robot for use in elderly people's home so that they can communicate with their loved ones virtually. And this is really great, right? I would love to get one of this robot for my parents as well. But the point is, who could have imagined that the 93 year old man talking to a robot only a while ago? Nobody could imagine, right? So this is how rapidly the world is changing. Be responsive 
to market change. So it's uncertain, but it's changing. So you have to, you can't stop moving, right? So one of my company, uh, Ideal Sweden, produces uh, smartphone accessories. We, during this COVID, we introduced new products. And we also focused heavily on the influencer marketing. So lockdown in retail stores has made many sales shift towards e-commerce. Everyone knows, right? But in order to survive, you can't just self-restrain and close stores. You have to find a way to uh, work around this situation. So we kept the focus and invested in the right thing at the right time. Actually, many uh, software um, smartphone case companies, in fact, started making masks also because they were not able to generate revenue from the retail store with the cases. But we decided to focus on what our strengths are. And as a result, we grew 300% year over year in April and May, both revenue and gross for, uh, profit. And our Instagram followers grew from 600K in April to 760K today. So it's paying off. We need to be consistent at what we do. Another uh, company, this is called Waku Waku, does renovation of homes. See, face-to-face -face meetings and seeing the actual property has been a default in real estate and housing business, especially in Japan. However, we switched our sales process to 100% remote in March already. So we banned face-to-face -face meetings with a customer. We did 100% remote. And you can only see the result of renovation when completed. So it really doesn't matter. If you go to the real uh, property, you just see the old building you don't see the actual results. So why bother meeting face to face, right? So as a result, we didn't see a decline in sales, but in fact hit the record high sales during May and June. And do you know why? It's because most of our competitors were closed during that period due to not being able to meet with prospects face to face. Our competitor thought that meeting face to face is not a good thing. So they just stopped all the activities. But there still is a need in the market. And so potential customers were looking around. Who can they talk to? And we were one of them. So it was really uh, actually a great opportunity for us. But the key point is, uh, is that we switched our way of doing business really quickly. Another example here, we also uh, responded quickly to the newly emerged needs. But unlike housing in uh, America was like, five bedrooms and three bathrooms. Japanese people are typically living in a pretty small space. Unless you're a boost graduate, perhaps maybe. You're boost graduates maybe living in a huge house, I don't know. But typical Japanese house don't have a study or isolated place, space to accommodate remote meetings. So people have to join a video conference from living or dining room where his or her family is relaxing, watching TV, you're working in next to them. So we started proposing to create an additional working space, which was very well accepted. See the one in the, the screen here? 
this is additional space that we created for isolation. This was a, just a den. We renovated to um, a remote working space. So this is another example of being responsible and agile to the market change. So as you can see from the previous examples, many people may tell you real business is developed through face-to-face -face interactions. You can do business online, right? But you have to ask yourself, is that what the market is looking for? Will it make your business better off if you do that now? And actually it's not because customers are looking for someone who can they talk to regardless of face-to-face -face or online. So when you are going to shift paradigm, you have to believe in yourself. Don't bother who tried to discourage, discourage you. Don't give up, don't give in. There are tons of people who comes to you and say, that doesn't work. Most of the people say that because they haven't seen the success by doing what they have never seen. So now I would like to share my career history, especially for the uh, new students, okay? I started, started at the Itochu doing heavy industry. I moved to IT, hardware, software. Um, I launched Amazon.com in Japan. I run Crocs, Avery Denison, Apparel. I also run healthcare, Johnson Johnson's contact lens. And currently, I support multiple startups. So most of the people whose reaction is, wow, how were you able to work in so many different industries? I always reply, I want to keep doing what I, excites me. And besides, they may look different, but they're not different as you think. These are big companies now, but hardly anyone knew Dell or Amazon at that time anyway. It's just a part piece of uh, new startups. But they knew Japan is a big market, but didn't know how to grow in the market because they were just one of the startups and just started to look outside of their origin countries, like US. So they just started to expand, and, but no one knew. So it's just startups, okay? Same challenges. First out of university, I joined Itochu. It's a trading company like many Japanese students. So why I, I joined, okay? I didn't have much reason why I joined Itochu, sorry. I wanted to do some overseas uh, business and I played football, American football at, in university. Every year, my senior gets into Itochu and they look very cool. I want to be like that, them, okay? But during Itochu, I started thinking I was become very interested in uh, direct business, which as many of you know, trading companies are not so good at direct marketing or sales. They're intermediate people. And I also felt that e-commerce is going to become a huge trend. It's coming and might as well wanted to be in the center of it rather than be in the center of uh, heavy industry. So after moving to Dell, I was always involved one way or another in e-commerce and omni-channel sales and marketing. Uh, Amazon, of course, e-commerce, Crocs, transformed from sandal brand to lifestyle, lifestyle footwear brand, but also uh, developed omni-channel sales system. And also same in Johnson Johnson. Johnson Johnson in the 140 years history, they only did a wholesale but uh, I was in honor to uh, develop the first own retail store in e-commerce and created Omnichannel. 
So products are different, but I can still fully leverage on my experience. But still somehow people tend to look at your career vertically. Once you're in the industry, uh, you have to master the industry. But I think in my case, I mastered the business model, which could be applied to various products. So again, just have to believe in yourself. These are all. So believe in yourself. Now let me share some typical phrases I heard so many times repeatedly. People said, nobody buys PCs directly from a manufacturer. People said, nobody buys PCs and servers online. You have to go to a store to buy one. Amazon, same thing. People said nobody would buy books online. And once people start buying new books, people said, well, maybe people buy new books, but nobody would buy used books online. People said nobody reads books in digital format. You have to be in paper. You have to go to the bookstore and glance through the book before you buy. Again, same thing. People said Crocs sandals are so ugly. Nobody will wear them. Nobody will. Johnson Johnson, people said nobody buys contact lens online. You have to go to the doctor and get a subscription, I mean, prescription. Besides, buying contact lens online is e illegal. The, uh, so there's the belief in Japan used to be, and now it's changing. Uh, buying contact lens online is illegal. But that was created from the uh, health ministry that they didn't want people to buy online. So actually it's not legal, not illegal, but people said nobody will buy it crazy ideal sweden people said too many smartphone cases company in the world you're just heading into red ocean but it turned out to be none of the uh smartphone case companies were focused in a fashion uh matter None of the smartphone cases come out with every spring and summer models, and every autumn winter models, different. And that's where we uh, were able to catch the significant growth. So, but, and ha having uh, overcome all these comments, uh, I believe I have been able to develop a unique position in the market and was able to increase my market value, right? You can see a clear commonality regardless of products. That's why I say there's not much difference, but also uh, I've made myself uh, develop my own value. When you're you used to work in a, in a certain company, uh, you will be developing your in-company value. So you're very valuable if you stay in the same company because you're a professional in that area, field. But if you decide to move on to other company or industry, the value may not be as valuable as you stay in the same company if you're not able to fully utilize it. So what exactly is your market value? How do you want to grow your value? In order to increase your market value, you should also develop universal power, which doesn't necessarily tie with certain job or industry. Power that is useful anytime, anywhere, regardless of 
given job or given uh, tasks. Can be used without being tied to a particular job, like formulate hypothesis, you know, be creative, right? Discover goals and problems on your own. If somebody tells you what the goal is and problems is and can go fix it, I think many smart guys can do it. But finding the goals and problems on your own is one of the skills that you can use at university. Think logically, too. Uh, inspire others. And ability to set and achieve higher goals than given. Right? Discovering goals and problems on your own is a first step. But um, in order to increase your value, you have to be able to set and achieve higher goals and achieve it. So that makes a difference, I believe. So now you, once you have developed good in-company value and universal power, it will be great to be a leader and open the way for yourself. So let's see what are the typical characteristics of a leader. See this penguin? The leader guy is jumping ahead of the other followers. What are the characteristics of these guys? Leaders seek challenges. Right? Leaders challenge status quo. That people don't believe that this is the best uh, situation. It could be better. But managers accept and seek to maintain the status quo. Managers are skilled in following processes. And that's great. You have to have those people to execute. You can't just have visionaries. But the tendency of managers are to accept the status quo and continue to do the things the same way. So even if the coronavirus is starting creeping up, uh, you're doing the same thing. Just stay home, right? Uh, close the store. That doesn't create anything. Tend to resist deviations from the current process and therefore resist new ways of doing things. So you have to be flexible. You have to be optimistic to being a good leader, right? Yeah, so in other words, leaders are positive, proactive, and managers tend to be reactive. I don't say it's uh, either of them are good and bad or better and worse, but uh, if you want to control your own destiny, you have to be proactive. You have to act as a leader. And leaders focus on the right things. Managers focus on doing things right. Do it right. Or what's right for the business. So when the situation changes, maybe what was right yesterday may not be right today. So, but you can, if you stick to the yesterday, then you might decline in the future. You have to adapt to what the market is asking, requiring, and do the right things. But managers, on the other hand, are tasked to do the things right. This is a goal. This is a program. This is a scenario. Get it right. So once the decisions have been made, managers take care of the project program delivery, ensuring that things are done right. And that's also very important. But it's very hard for them to control their destiny by themselves. Leaders also tend to think long terms, see the horizon. Managers think and get the result for the short to midterm. So leaders Everybody maybe agree to this. It's create a vision. The future state of the organization when the strategic goals are achieved. What does it look like if you, we succeed in this business? What's the right thing to do? On the other hand, managers focus on achieving the short-term and mid-term deliverables. 
So in order to achieve the long-term goal, you have to be successful step by step. So this week, this month, this quarter, hit this KPI. So managers focus on hitting those KPIs. But as a result, if you hit all the KPIs, you will be successful in the long term. Right? So that's how it works. Leaders motivate and inspire managers control. Leaders, typical leaders are very good, uh, have human skills, inspire their people. Uh, they th thank people for working hard, setting goals. Um, making meaningful contributions to people and always encouraging the team to deliver the best work they can. Uh, it's not that they are demanding or ordering to hit the, to, to deliver, but they always encourage. Look at this. If we do this together in the right way, imagine how fun it is. Managers, on the other hand, focus on implementing processes. Control. Imagine if you don't hit this number, we don't get paid. Wow. That's probably reality, but it's not encouraging much. It's not inspiring. But you have to do what you have to, right? And what I'm trying to say again is uh, we need both leaders and managers, that's for sure, in order to execute one business. But I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, you, you have better chance to control your own destiny by leading the way. And especially the new students who's going to have a very exciting experience in uh, GSB or sorry, booth, uh, I encourage you to uh, do so. And if you do that, the future Japan is going to be very bright, hopefully. Okay, so believe in yourself and control your own destiny with a leader's mentality and actions. Mentality is not enough, right? You have to have actions on top of that. So smart people have good logics. They can express their mentality in a very logical way, but needs to be actual. It has to happen. And I think that's what leaders uh, are for. Okay, this is my last slide, actually. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of my career, I played football in my college, your university. I was a running back. So I believe leaders not just commit to the goal. So hitting the goal is not, is good, but it's, of course, it's, you have to hit the but if you go above the goal, like overachieve the goal, that's where you make big difference. Uh, I, I guess everybody knows American football. You have to gain a total of 10 or more yards within usually four attacks, four downs. If you go over 10 yards, you can have another position and start uh, your play again. Otherwise, um, the offense and defense is going to be reversed. But 10 yards plus, and compared to 9.9 .9 yards, it's only one of 10th yards difference. It's whether you get another chance to uh, play your game or uh, reverse to be a defense. And that really makes a big difference. When I look at the great running backs, 
they run 9.9 yards. But if you are running back who constantly runs over 10 yards, that makes you a superb running back and be welcome perhaps to the Hall of Fame. Great. I, I would love to do that too. I, I used, I, I wanted to. I actually broke my uh, knee ligament three times. And so, unfortunately, <laughs> I could only make maybe uh, 9.8 yards. So there are many, so many opportunities, uh, regardless of even pre-COVID or in new normal. New normal is already happening. And we, I don't think we can go backwards again, never. But there are always opportunities because if the world changes, the people's needs and wants always changes as well. So it's a matter of how we uh, be really responsible, responsive to those changes and how quickly we can adapt to that. And that's going to be a really uh, our challenges and probably a dream. But in order to do that, as I mentioned before, that why don't we, we believe in ourselves and control our own destiny rather than just waiting for the people's um, uh, direction and react to that. So I hope that um, people who are going to start new uh, time at Chicago would always be sensitive to new opportunities and how uh, the world is changing, evolving, and how yourself is growing and evolving and what you can do in the future. Well, thank you, all the best, and especially stay safe, uh, but don't stay too much in home. Domingo, uh, but stay safe again. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Before I opening up the uh, you know question and a comment from the floor, uh, let me give you a very brief uh, you know the episode of Mike. Uh, about a month ago, uh, we hosted a dinner for the newly admitted student. And Mike was so uh, for generous uh, to be the co-host of that dinner. And at that dinner, we are talking about a lot of things among uh, amongst the uh, amongst us. Uh, us meaning the uh, you know newly admitted student, and uh, on the yeah, one side and the other side of the uh, alum alumni. And Mike's message was always the same: guys, you have to control your own destiny. That encouraged, I believe. Uh, many of the new readmitted students, despite uh, all the difficulties and the challenge that we talked about uh, this evening. But with that, I would like to open up uh, to the floor uh, for the question and a comment for Mike Onishi. Mike, would you um, be, uh, mind uh, shutting down your... Yeah, thank yep. you. Okay. Thank you. So raise your hand, go ahead, ask your question and a comment. Okay, King-san, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, so my name is Tadayuki King. I'm the newly admitted student for the class of 2022. And Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, so thank you very much for your inspiring speech. Um, every bit of your uh, stories were really inspiring. And I think um, I want to point out that uh, the story about market value um, was, I'm not exaggerating, but really eye-opening for me. I have, because uh, I've been working in the investment banking industry for 10 years, doing M&A advisory all the time. So, um, so rather I was acquiring really hard skills uh, over my career, but you shed a new light, a uh, new perspective on gaining uh, universal power, portable skills. And I 
really agree that it's important if you want to be a leader and make a change. And I just wanted to ask one thing, and that is, so you listed up several, you know, portable skills, uh, for example, but is there any advice uh, for me or for us to um, acquire, you know, those skills? And I think that would be a great guidance for us to spend the next two years uh, really effectively. Okay, th thank you for your question. Great question, by the way. Um, so I, I think you, you need to, so life is strategy. So how do you want to uh, shape your life? And what, why are you going to Chicago? I think it's the one question that you need to answer yourself. So it's not, it's not a bad thing to, for example, stay in an investment banking and be professional in that area, right? Um, but even if you stay in the same uh, industry, you need to be, uh, it will be much better if you can control yourself rather than be a follower, right? So I think we, during uh, Chicago, even, even if you're not asking for it, I think there will be many opportunities that you will be working with your uh, classmates and you need to step up to um, uh, express yourself. But I think in the, in the uh, maybe Japanese students typically are not uh, well trained to not be shy have your own thinking and express yourself. If, if you have a different background, it's natural that you'll have different ideas or with different comments. But living in Japan, you tend to have uh, only one, you know, na nationality and uh, so aun no kokyu. So you think that you don't have to say it because you understand it. But that's not a global standard. You have to express yourself. Otherwise, people will think you don't have any ideas. So I think those very small but repeating uh, like training by yourself, trying to be yourself, what do you think? What they think? I think that will be help through your daily days, daily activities. Is that, is that answered your question? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Um, I'll try to train myself every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, good luck with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Can I have a question, Mike? No. Oh, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Um, as an entrepreneur, I have a question. Uh, one of the big difficulties of startups have is getting good people, I believe. And you were in early stage businesses a lot. So if you have any tips to how to get good people, at a very early stage of businesses, I really would like to know that. Oh, great question. I, I would love to know the answer too. <laughs> but you, you have to, so you, you have to uh, decide what's the priority, mm -hmm. right? So for example, when we launched Amazon, uh, nobody knew Amazon. Somebody knew Amazon thought Amazon is going to go bankrupt. <laughs> okay. okay. Very simple though. The Amazon was starting to be successful in the U in US. Mm -hmm. And because of the e-commerce, uh, the focus is to replicate how you su succeed in US into Japan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, you don't have to have a very high skilled marketing person or finance person. Mm -hmm. 
you have to have bilingual person who can understand what the U.S. headquarters is saying. So we went out, recruit bilingual person, mm -hmm. and begged them that they can stay, continue their own business, mm -hmm. right? But please help us maybe uh, part-time, mm -hmm. two days a week. Mm -hmm. So now, now the, these days, Japanese government are, you know, um, part-time job. Yeah. Part, yeah, pushing for part-time job. Yeah. Yeah. But that's uh, already happened in Amazon, Japan, in More than like a, <laughs> two, two two thousand or so, <laughs> so mm. twenty years ago. Yeah. So, I, I think you 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 should be uh, think flexible, think out of box. <laughs> So at, at Dell, when we first started um, our call center, taking phones, mm. we 100% outsourced mm. the, the operators to a call center company. But two years later, I converted all those uh, outsourcers to full-time employee. Mm. Okay. About 40, 40 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The outsource company didn't like me mm -hmm. because I took all their employees. <laughs> but no choice. There's no other better people outside mm -hmm. who knows how to sell Dell than the outsource people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's maybe another example. Uh, I don't know. Maybe these days you might be get arrested by compliance. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> always good to think something out of box. Okay. Yeah. So don't I don't I don't think you should uh, expect that you will get a good great person from beginning. <laughs> it's a matter of how you give them the clear. Mm direction mm. and help you achieve the goal. Mm. Thank you. It is very help, helpful. Yeah, yeah thank you. Great statistics. I, I wish I could do that too. <laughs> it's easy to say. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> sure. I You're think welcome. we have a question from John Stacy. I think. You have a hand, right? Yes. Okay. Please go ahead. And I have Stacey. one question from a newly admitted student. So uh, I'll give him the priority, okay? Then after that, the John and Stacy. So uh, Shintaro Kuryu, it's your time. Go ahead and ask your question. Um, hi, my name is Shintaro Kuryu. I'm a newly admitted student. Um, Mr. Onishi, thank you very much for your insightful speech. Um, I have a couple of questions, but um, I would like to highlight one. And um, you've mentioned how you kind of took initiative on your career strategy and I would really like to know how when was there any particular moment where you realized what your you know market values were or was that something you realized throughout your career after boot I mean the GSP yeah thank you um, actually yeah so after GSB I think is a right answer I was actually sponsored from Itochu mm -hmm. to go to Chicago. And so before that, uh, I was really focus, focusing on my heavy industry business. But uh, once I came to Chicago, I, I still remember the first day I attended at Chicago, there was a uh, brown bag lunch by United Airlines and I attended that. So for the first day, uh, start thinking of what I'm going to be in the future. Right. Um, I did my summer internship in uh, at the AT Kearney. That's also very different. Uh, but the biggest, I think, 
difference, I mean, the, the uh, even this. We were the first, probably first uh, class to start do homework by downloading homeworks from a host server. It's connected by modem and only getting getting the home homework takes like two or three hours. And at that time, the on, only uh, browser was Netscape. But I, it really struck me that the world is going to change. At that time, Itochu didn't even have emails. So yeah, and then also, I was I was um, in, in the flight, on the plane, and saw this in-flight magazine, and found a company called Dell. Strange company. The PC machine doesn't have any software on it. Built to order, direct from the factory. But it was very. Uh, inspiring moment that I saw that ad. So unless I came to Chicago, probably I uh, didn't have a chance to uh, use internet nor see direct models. So that I think was pretty good. Also, when you, during the Chicago, I also noticed that each of the students, classmates, uh, have different background. And so they say completely different things than I do, but that's not wrong. That's, they're based on what their experience and knowledge are. And that's completely different from my background. So it's not strange that they have different comments, but I see that for two years every day. And so that probably made me very flexible and helped me uh, to look at what is really the value of those services and products that I have been uh, handling later days. Okay. Thank so you that's, so much for the answer. Yeah. Please, please, please enjoy your Chicago life. Thank you very much. And just one, one more extra thing. Um, I recently realized that my uncle um, mm -hmm. was in the same class as you and Mr. Yamamoto. So. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yes, my uncle is uh, Nishino Kaz, and I really <laughs> recently realized that. Um, oh, Nishino san. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> He's my uncle, so right. um, is, is that right? Kind of, yeah. We 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 live yeah, so. pretty close together, though. We he, he's in he's oh, really? the next next station. Okay. Yeah. So I really felt close to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for. Oh, thing. so you must be a very smart guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Nishino san is. <laughs> yeah, Nishino san was the, 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 the smartest guy in our class. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't. Oh, he really? doesn't have. <laughs> he doesn't have to study. He just absorbs everything during the class. <laughs> Good to know that. So, John, it's your time. Yep. Thank you, uh, Samu and Mike. Thank you very much for your inspiring speech. Uh, I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. Thank you very uh, much. This for is not listening. a question. Uh, just, just an observation. Um, mm -hmm. One of the themes that you run. Uh, in your speech, uh, to do the right thing, uh, the rather than you know how to do things right. In fact, uh, over forty years ago, when I studied at Booth, what then called uh, business school, um, I took Harry Davis class. Let me tell you, you know, this is forty years ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember, you know, many things. Uh, only thing that I remember is, uh, but I learned something great at University of Chicago. But I uh, distinctly remember what Harry Davis taught us. 
And that was exactly the line that you mentioned. At the end of his uh, strategy course, he said, hey guys, don't focus on how to do things right. Think about uh, you know, do the right things. That has struck me in my head um, for uh, in the rest of my life. Um, and I'm glad to hear, you know, Mike, uh, uh, um, you know, endorsing that, uh, um, you know, thinking uh, today. So oh, what, I can, you know, what, what I can tell uh, uh, incoming students is that that's the kind of stuff you can learn uh, from both school as well as from, uh, you know, alumni like, uh, you know, Mike. So thank you. That's just observation. Oh, thank you very much for your kind words. Actually, I, I was... Uh, uh, invited to Harry Davis' uh, home once. Mm. He's a very, very nice person. Uh, <laughs> good family. Mm. It's, it's a really nice memory for me. And I'm glad that uh, John just mentioned that I'm saying the same thing <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, Stacy, it's your turn. So uh, let me add my thanks. I enjoyed your remarks very much, Mike. And I will also you. tell you that Harry, at the age of 82, continues to teach. So that will oh, uh, nice. make us all quite happy. Great. Um, so my question is um, builds a bit off of the question around hiring the right people. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, leaders, as you show, jump into the water before the others. So what what did you look for um, in the companies that you chose to join over time? How did you know that companies would be receptive to your approach, to your, um, your strategies? Um, or did you just focus on sharing with us the, you know, the cases that were the most impactful or most successful? Mm. Oh, th well, thank you very much for your uh, great question. So, when I started Dell, uh, my boss told me, do the right thing. Mm. Do the right thing for the business. And if you continue, continue to do that, some people will hate you. They, they won't like you. But if you continue to do the right thing, everyone will respect you. So maybe don't like or don't agree, but respect. So just continue to do the right thing. And that was when I was like 30 years old. And I, that's, I, I think I've always been uh, keeping that in my mind. He also told me very interesting thing is that if you want to, uh, move up in the same company. Take any higher position. When I, when I was a senior manager and my next level was director, he came to me and said, if you are, have a chance, you take the position, even like director of washing toilets, <laughs> director of wiping windows. Director is a director. When you move up, your autonomy, your responsibility is much bigger. And then you start to be able to do bigger things. So that's probably, it's not an exaggeration, but uh, I think I always think it that way. Big responsibility means look big, think big. Thank yeah. Thank you. All right, so last question, David. You, it's your turn, David. Go ahead and ask your question. Sure. Um, so Mike, uh, thank you very much for your interesting talk. Um, uh -huh. I have a question specifically regarding Japan and US and the history of business that I think based on some of your comments, you would have insights into. Um, that question is, can you think of any explanation why W. Edwards Deming and Peter Drucker were so much more popular in Japan than the USA? Yeah, for Deming, I think um, 
because of the um, what very precise operation which resonates to Japanese culture much. Uh, for Peter Drucker, I thought they, he was very popular in the U.S. as well, but mm -hmm. I think... Even today, he sells five times more books every year, not even adjusting for population in, in Japan than he does in the U.S., according to my research and according to his daughter, who oh. maintains his record. So I, I, Interesting. Is it's, I, 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 find, I find that outsize uh, participation fascinating. It might be fun to talk with you offline about that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, actually, I, I visited uh, Peter Drucker's uh, home after, after he uh, passed away. Uh, his, his wife uh, hosted me, and uh, we had a very good chat. Very, I, I also have probably four or five uh, Peter Drucker's books in my house, too. I think Japanese likes these uh, kind of way of thinking. And maybe one thing is because it's maybe difficult for actually implement in the Japanese society because it's so rigid. And maybe people want to dream to do the right thing. I don't know, but it's, yeah, I, I would welcome to uh, discuss uh, offline and uh, would love to. Thank you, Mike. David? Thank you. So, geez, this is, uh, has been a fascinating discussion. And uh, we can go on like this for another four or five hours. But, you know, I think it's time to uh, call it a day. So, Stacy, I just want to turn to you once again to give us a closing remarks for AGM 2020 online. Mm. Um, I have done my best tonight not to get teary-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, as competitive and uh, hard driving as I can be. Um, Mike, I love the comment of looking for people who will respect you, not love you. Um, I, I think, um, you know, this is, communities like this are why Chicago Booth is just so successful and has so much of a future, a great future ahead of us. So thank you each and every one of you for the roles you play in making our community strong. I think um, there's a 2015 grad on this call who had the courage to tell me that it was important that we showcase a strong community um, to attract great Japanese talent. And this community is so wonderful and so great. So I know that all of you play an important role um, and that you will continue to. And um, thanks for letting me wear the jersey and for inviting me tonight. Thank you, Osama. Thank you, Stacy. Without it, once again, and Stacy. Uh, thank you very much for all the things that you did for us. And uh, we wish you all the best for your new chapter. And, uh, you know, you, you cannot escape from us, okay? <laughs> but with that, thank you all uh, for joining us. I think uh, this is a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, experience uh, seeing you all online. And uh, this concludes our first successful AGM online and looking forward to see you uh, in person next time uh, year 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening or good, good day. Good day. <laughs>